Hello on Friday morning. I'm feeling a little bit better. I do still have a fever and I'm kind of clammy most of the time, but otherwise I'm doing okay. I never really got that sick, uh, but I've just been hovering with this low fever and this fatigue for the last couple of days. But I miss you guys and I hope to see you next week. Uh, sooner the better. I do see that a lot of you are doing a great job on your Ed Puzzle assignments, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, so to continue today and over the weekend on our exploration of civil rights, as you may or may not know, there's a lot of uh, protests today happening. A couple of years ago, there were a lot of protests around the George Floyd uh, murder that happened. And we see this uh, video here shows protests happening. I think this one's in New York City. And so protesters get together and uh, advocated, uh, spoke for uh, what they thought was a needed change, I think with specifically towards American policing, but to address some longstanding issues and challenges we face uh, in America with race. Uh, here you see people peacefully protesting. They're walking down the street. They're speaking their mind, sometimes loud. On the other hand, though, sometimes these protests turn violent, especially at night. It seemed like some protesters went home, uh, but a lot of people stayed behind. And I don't think uh, a lot of them, their best interest was uh, was protesting. It might have been just really causing a ruckus. Uh, today, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a leaked report that indicated that um, uh, Roe v. Wade, which was a, a federal law that uh, guaranteed the right to abortion for women was going to be overturned. Uh, people had been protesting to end that Roe v. Wade uh, for decades, really. Uh, and now that it's probably going to be overturned in about a month, uh, people are now coming out to protect the Roe v. Wade and protect uh, a woman's right to choose, which is their message, to choose whether or not she has a right to an abortion. The other side protested really for the protection of the unborn child. And that's what they were doing. It's a very complicated, very personal uh, protest. But here you see people are getting hot and heavy into it, um, but um, they are remaining peaceful. In addition, today, we're also going to talk about a lot of the protesters, even just last night. Let me get this thing off of here. And so here you see uh, the protesters. They're protesting to preserve Roe v. Wade. Uh, they're actually going to the judges' houses, though, who are making these decisions. And uh, there's some debate as to whether or not they should really be able to go to the people's houses. There's no debate as to whether or not you can protest in front of the Supreme Court building or a federal building. But they're literally going to their homes. And so people are trying to uh, make the judges change their mind. I don't know what they're, that's probably what they're trying to do, but there are laws that protect judges from these kinds of things. Now, these pre protests have been peaceful, um, but um, still there's a question as to whether or not they're right. Nevertheless, in America, you are guaranteed the right to protest, uh, peacefully protest, peacefully assemble. You see the Bill of Rights is a link over here. These are listed in these Bill of Rights, and you're going to use that today to finish this assignment. We're going to do what I want to ask you to do is compare the protest of today against the protest that happened in the video you're going to watch from the march from Selma uh, to Montgomery. Uh, this very famous um, Edmund Pettus Bridge was where the march started. And that gentleman you just saw, John Lewis, uh, was a young man then. There he is in the white jacket, the tan jacket. Uh, you can still see in a minute the protest turns very violent as police officers uh, forcibly repel uh, the protesters. And that is um, gone down as uh, one of the lower moments in uh, U.S. racial history. So what I'm going to ask you to do, though, is to watch the video here. I'm gonna, I've attached to you um, this, um, this uh, Google uh, Slides program. And uh, there are four slides. There's videos inside of each slide. And uh, there are questions that go along with it. And then the final question is, uh, it's a spelling error, I'm going to fix that. Explain three ways in which the March to Montgomery compares to the marches that are happening today, whether George Floyd, whether the Roe v. Wade, whether it's another march or another uh, uh, civil rights uh, protest issue that matters to you. Maybe it's LGBTQ, maybe it's Hispanic American, 
uh, I don't know what it is. But whatever matters to you, you might want to compare what happened then to what happened now. All right. And that'll be it. Now, again, I hope to be back on Monday, God willing. And um, this fever goes down. But I miss you guys. And if you have any questions, please make sure you let me know through the Google Classroom. See you later. One last quick thing. When you search up, when I ask you to search things up, I want you to add four kids at the end of it. For example, I'm going to ask you to search up literacy tests. So you would type in the Googler, L-I-T-E-R-A-C-Y-T-E-S-T-S, and you're going to simply add four, oops, four kids. All right, whatever you search up, add four kids because that actually narrows down a little bit the search to, uh, um, to results that matter to us in our eighth grade classroom. Hit enter, and you'll see typically the top result is going to be good for us, literacy test fact for kids. This is a good website. All right, click on that bad boy, and it'll open up, and here's what you need briefly about what literacy tests were. Muy bien.